Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Nicholas Kanhai. Good evening to all the folks assembled here in the hundreds in Barakpur for this wonderful night in support of our great party, our great leader, and our great team. I want to acknowledge, of course, the Honorable Kamla Prasad Bisesa, political leader of the United National Congress, and the next political leader of the United National Congress come June 26. My colleagues, my colleagues on the platform, executive members of our party, fellow candidates, executive officers of the constituencies assembled here, activists all, our listeners and viewers, we have viewers and listeners throughout the world, in the Caribbean, in North America, in Europe tonight, tuning in to listen to this meeting and to see the energy and hear the vitality of our speakers and our policy and programs. Brothers and sisters, it's a wonderful evening. I want to thank all of you for coming out on relatively short notice that we can see hundreds of people at this point when we had a few hours to mobilize. I ask you to give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah! Yeah! I, want, I want you to know that while this is a campaign for internal, internal elections, this is much more than a campaign for internal elections. If all of you who assembled here would come out on June 26 and vote for the star team, everybody will win. Forget the rest of the country. But it is not that. It is much more than just 26th of June. Brothers and sisters, this country is unrecognizable from the paradise that Mrs. Passard Bissessa left in 2015. In 2015, when she left office, brothers and sisters, the young people had jobs, had hope, the children had laptops, the people had roads, they had water, they had electricity, they had an opportunity, they had prosperity. Almost every sector of the economy was lively and booming. Today, where are we? This country is among the most backward countries in the Western Hemisphere under Keith Rowley. You all are aware of that? Every sector has collapsed, whether it is energy, construction, manufacturing, every single thing. Look today, people are lining up by the thousands to literally jump in a boat to get out of here, to get jobs, because they are suffering. Man thinks so bad, the Venezuelans leaving. They have come here for opportunity. They go on to because things are so bad. Brothers and sisters, the writing is on the wall. Keith Rowley will go come the next general elections in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah! The, everybody knows that. The writing is on the wall. Rowley might not see it because I think he thieves the wall too. So, brothers and sisters, we have to unite. In this election, coming up on June 26, we ask for your support. We have 17 stars and one superstar. So we welcome our superstar as well, who will join us in a while, the Honorable Kamla Prasad Bissessa, as the next political leader and Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah! Yeah! No one who has seen the progress made by the partnership administration and by Prime Minister Pasad Bisesa can deny that this country was at its best. You know why this election is so important as well? Of course it is democracy, of course it is a constitutional requirement. But if you look at the history of this country, the social and economic history of this country, this country is always soaring high, doing well, enjoying prosperity when the UNC is in office. Yeah. Always, always. So, a strong UNC is a strong Trinidad and Tobago. A strong UNC is a dynamic and prosperous Trinidad and Tobago. When the party is out of office, the country collapses. You can just think some of you who were there between 1995 to 2000, 2001, the prosperity we enjoyed. $9 a barrel of oil. $9. Unemployment at its lowest. Between 2010 2015, brothers and sisters, how much we have done. I could spend till tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, 
talking about our achievements. You remember 100 schools. You remember fire station in Mayaro. You remember brothers and sisters. Hospital, Point Fourteen, Arima, Kuva, hospital all over the place, San Fernando, teaching hospital. Jolene John, our deputy leader candidate, one of them, was in charge of Udicott. She worked, I don't want to say anything in any rough way, but she worked so hard. She worked day and night. One day we were building the San Fernando Hospital, Mrs. Bissessa said, turn that around from a government car park or something into a hospital. As Mrs. John told me, Mrs. John said, she said, Minister, I want you to tour this facility. I said, no problem, Jolene, I'm ready to tour. She said, okay, I will be there at 4 to 3 in the morning. I said, all right, I go be there at 9 in the morning. <laughs> Such is the hard work and determination of Jolene and others. On our slate, we are giving the best candidates you can think of. You have heard this evening from Ravi Ratiram. He is a child of the United National Congress. Yeah! And when others did not want to make sacrifices to contest hard elections, he stood tall. And he tall too, but he stood tall. I remember when I came into politics of all the places in the world, Mr. Pandey sent me in San Fernando East. When the NAR won every seat in the country, they couldn't win San Fernando East. I gone there because the leader tell me that's where you want me to go. What go do? Huh? When we asked Ravi Ratiram to go labre, he gone for a hard fight. He find that wasn't hard enough. He gone point four ten after. That is the metal of people you want serving your party, brother. Don Sylvester, somewhere around here, he was here earlier, contesting this election. He has been a stalwart, a mobilizer in this party forever. And I think anybody who contests are anybody who contests against Don, I think them done. I think them done. If your contests are against Don, something is wrong. Something is wrong. So brothers and sisters, we are asking you to come out. Come out on June 26 and cast every vote for all 18 members of the star slate. You will have the names, but for now I, I can't remember all, so I'll tell you the star, the symbol. Come out and cast your vote in your numbers. We want tens of thousands of votes on that day, so Mrs. Passad Bissessa can stand with the largest turnout in any political party in the Caribbean behind her. And don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. I think she's running against two other candidates. I think it's one or two. No, but he just carried two personality, you know, so it's, it might be two. So brothers and sisters, whatever the, the, the detractors tell you, ignore them. You know, people say, oh, the UNC can't win. The UNC can't do this. The UNC can't do that. Rubbish. I want to tell you something. It is this opposition that has exposed this government at every turn. At every turn. We are, we are 19 seats. We are two seats away from taking the government. It is within striking distance. And the way they are falling apart today, it is a matter of time. So we get our house in order around an intelligent, experienced pol politician, prime minister and leader with a dynamic team of men and women so we can run the affairs of the country. That is what we are about. And that is what we must demonstrate on June 26. Look what happened to the Attorney General. Now, me and oh, to be honest with you, I just tell people, me and no oh, big time corp, corp thing, lawyer and thing. Eh? But I understand something. When a man cannot argue that he's doing right and he cannot confess that he did wrong, he stay quiet. <laughs> if you can't argue that you're doing right and you don't want to admit that you do a wrong, you stay quiet. That fella has gone in a court in Miami. And there is a good chance that we, they, they can investigate him for perjury under American law. America has 300 million people. All right? That's a fact. Do you know one human being across there could just walk into Miami-Dade County Sheriff's Office and make a report that they have documents in their hand? And Mr. Police, Mr. Sheriff... I want to say that this foreign man from Trinidad and Tobago who posing as an AG, he should be investigated for the offense of perjury. That is what we have to do. And don't put it beyond somebody, I don't know who, it's not me, but I don't put it beyond somebody to march into a police station in Florida 
and make a report so that the police, the United States cops, could now go after here. And them, them, are not, them is not jokers, you know. Them is not jokers. Them serious when you make report there. Because he appears to have committed an offense. And he says he's quiet. What nonsense. You are being accused of high crime, high offense. And you quiet? And the prime minister saying nothing. He said nothing with Cummins. Cummins took Senator Janty Lachmidial to court. Trying to enjoy it's called injunker from speaking, from, from making statements and, and so on on his conduct, on his, the alleged improper conduct. He tried to, he tried to shut you up. But I'm tell you something, no woman in the UN so you could shut up. Eh? No, no, no. From the top come down. You can't, you can't shut them up. You can't gag them. No UNC woman does take that. So don't worry. First you could try. You don't know if you're coming or if you're going. And his time is also coming. And it is a matter of time before he fall, before the Attorney General go. Brothers and sisters, the one is you I'll raise with you tonight. We're expecting at any time our political leader, the one is you I want to raise is a matter I raised a few days ago. Have you all been watching the news, reading the newspaper? This catastrophe involving the Port of Spain Central Block in Port of Spain, the hospital project. Five years we in opposition, 2015 to 2020. Yeah. D.L. Singh used to stand up and pontificate. Remember that, Rodney? Yeah. He used to stand up self-righteous. Now, that fella is a failed druggist. Huh? <laughs> Not a pharmacist. Pharmacists need qualification. He's a druggist. In the old days, they used to put fellas a measure out tablet and pump tablet and thing. They are a druggist. And he failed. I think he, he, that failed too. He stand up and every time beating him to his chest, UNC did nothing to the central block. It could fall down any time. People could be hurt. Rowley, he said he had a report somewhere. I don't know where that report was, but he had a report. Central block could fall down any time and UNC do nothing. We say, okay, you do something now. Huh? Seven years now, they start a contract with Shanghai. Collapse. Gone. Fall down. They say that's pandemic. They tried the other day to give out a contract. You know the bubble associated with that, brothers and sisters? The bubble. They put a deadline of May 20th at a Friday evening, 4 o'clock. For the end, for me putting your tender. Time come. Tender close. Two companies bid. So as is the process, they exposed the names. We saw the names of the two companies and the price. And their price. The next phase is on May 23rd or so, where the proponents who have bid, they come to make a presentation. So I know your price, you know my price, we make a presentation based on that. You know when the two companies make a presentation, you the cut tell them, hold up, it have a third man in the game here. <laughs> Not a new man this time, a third man. <laughs> it had a third player out of the blue. So the company said, well, what happened here? This person would have known our bid, would have known our data, we just had a presentation for 30 minutes each telling you our technical data and so on. They said, no, what happened was a technical glitch. TSTT messed up again. You know in the old days when you say about telco? <laughs> well, they said TSTT messed up again. They have a portal, an electronic highway, and the people submitted their bill, um, the, the tender, Meru, but it didn't come. They had a breakdown in the highway. So they tell that. Two days later, TSTT issued a statement. They say, hold up. Nothing happened like that. Eh? We are responsible for that. Eh? That is UDCOT now playing the fool. Their system break down. And today, we are here. So brothers and sisters, we want, to, we want to invite you to rise, to lift your voices, to put your hands together, to welcome the political leader, the member of parliament for Separia, yeah. the former prime minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And on June 26, to be returned as political leader of the United National Congress. Welcome with a triumphant wave. I'm seeing all those flags waving. I'm seeing a guard of honor. I am seeing a multitude of people. Let us welcome the superstar of the star team, the leader of our team,
who will be returned on June 26 as the political leader of the United National Congress. Let's hear it again for the political leader, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Thank you. Mrs. Prasad Bissessa has the experience, the qualifications, the temperament, and the toughness, and the track record to rescue this country in quick time. And on June 26, you must return her as the political leader with her entire slate of candidates on the national executive of our great party. Brothers and sisters, I was indicating to you that debacle involving Udicott. And Udicott first passed the blame to TSTT. Then TSTT issued a statement and said, not we, not we. It's really Udicott had a problem. And don't blame TSTT because you know TSTT has Ravi say in enough bacchanal already. So they want no more. Udicott has stayed silent to this day on that matter. That is a serious matter. You cannot interfere. You cannot get involved in bubble involving tendering for hundreds of millions of dollars. Tonight I ask Udicott to please state whether or not at a meeting attended by the proponents, meaning the bidders, for that project at a meeting on April 25th, 2022. The, the corporation Udicott indicated that all matters related to the submission of tenders, including loss of power, loss of power, that means electricity and internet system and so on, insufficient time, etc. That is the responsibility of the bidders, not the responsibility of Udicott. And their submissions, if it comes in after, will not be accepted. Udicott indicated that on April 25th, I asked tonight, Noel Garcia, he disappear again. He disappear again. We're not hearing him. We're not seeing him. We don't live in the country. I asked him whether they told the proponents, the bidders, that they will not entertain late submissions, regardless of what your problem is. If the portal break down, that is your problem. If the highway break down, that is your problem. But they accepted a third bidder. The board must also state whether at a mandatory presentation on May 23rd, there was whether they gave any information about a third bidder. Our information is that when Udicott met on the 23rd with the two bidders that put in the bid, they never informed anybody that there was a third bidder in the race as well. It has to be confirmed. It has to be confirmed, brothers and sisters, whether the two bidders made presentations in the presence of Udicott officials who then went later to inform the third bidder of the technical nature of those presentations. That is a serious matter. The board must further indicate whether it was only at the end of the presentation that the bidders were informed that a third bidder had submitted a tender which, has not, which was not shown on what is called the e-portal at the closing date and time for tendering. Udicott directors have a responsibility to state whether this information was revealed only after the two bids were displayed with their pricing. Those are serious matters. It is scandalous. You know what is the, the money we're talking about here is more or less about $300 million for steelworks. 
And a third bidder that was never on the horizon, didn't submit in time, regardless of what their problem was, was not only allowed to come in, but they won the tender. They actually won coming in after. Is it correct that Udicott said that a report with relevant details would be made available to the other bidders? And to this day, we are told, no report has been made available. Brothers and sisters, these are serious questions that Udicott must answer. You cannot cover it up, pull it under the carpet. You cannot do that. And this time, we intend to hold Udicott. You know who is the line manager for Udicott? Anybody know that? The line manager for Udicott. The line minister, sorry. The line minister for Udicott is Keith Rowley. Wow. Under our administration, Udicott was under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. When he came into power and he realized what Udicott doing and how it working and so on, they took it away one September night in the middle of the night. They changed some papers called Gazetteen and so on and Rowley took it onto himself. Did you remember in that same time, Udicott took a loan using a, a middleman player called Global Finance, managed by the brother of a cabinet minister? Yeah. Stuart Young's brother is a manager of that company, Global Finance. That's, That's why they, they don't want the procurement legislation correct, Kurt. So, brothers and sisters, Rowley took it away a night in September. Two days later, Global Finance get contract. Now you are seeing what is happening today, and Keith Rowley is the minister, but he like now the AG, he, say, he take a vow of silence, so he's not talking about that either. He leaving that for Noel Garcia, poor fella, you can't find him nowhere. And that is the calamity that we face in this country. These are the issues the UNC will have to deal with when we get into power under the leadership of the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa. They are squandering your money by the day. I told you before there was a judgment with um, EMBDC and a South company called Namalco. The government, through EMBDC, lost a billion dollars. You know these fellas, bold face enough, they're going and appeal it now. They're going and spend millions of dollars more to appeal and the taxpayer must pay the bill. In that matter, the judge gave a related order. You know, you give a judgment and then an order comes after dealing with costs and so on. Do you know the judge in that case ordered the government, EMBDC, to pay all the expenses of Namalco for what is called professional fees? <coughs> the professional fees is all the scientific people who have to come give evidence and things. That was a major case. It adds up to 10 million Trinidad and Tobago dollars. So that's 10 million more the taxpayer must pay. And look at it with OS now. That next problem with the highway, out of malice, out of hate, out of incompetence, and out of corruption, they wrongly terminated the contract because Kamla Prasad, Bissessa, and the partnership started. That's all. That's why they closed the Coover Hospital. Malice. It took a pandemic to open that hospital. They couldn't find the key for about four and a half years. They couldn't find the key. So brothers and sisters, they are driving this country by malice and by hate. And Rowley Gallery in Los Angeles posing with Biden. Well, I feel so sorry for President Biden, huh? To stand up next to that fella. I feel sorry for him. Posing there. They took a parliamentary team there with nobody from the opposition. They're gone. Never. The practice in our parliament history is when you are taking a parliament team, you have government, you have opposition, and you have independent as well. Sometimes. But government opposition you know they take no one from the opposition they're going posing and gallerying themselves all over the place and this country has nothing to benefit rowley jumping up in guyana he happy he happy in guyana caricom i feel he wanted order Cari what's called caricom order or something like that you know uh, yeah order of the caribbean community i think that's what he's playing for really and when the pande administration write off a debt to guyana he stand in the parliament you remember that some of you remember that. And he said, don't write off no debt. Take, uh, take a million acres of forestry from them. Don't write off the debt. He was promoting what is called debt for equity swap. Meaning, we go write off your debt, but we want you thing from you. We want your house. We want your car. We want your land. We want man. Everything. That's what, that what he wanted. That's what he was talking about, this debt for equity swap. You want everything. So, yeah, he wanted 
That is a good point, Mrs. Wasad. Mr. Sir, remember that debate. It was an immigration bill debate on June 6, 1996. I'll never forget it so long as I live, and even after, I ain't gonna forget it. <laughs> he he gone in the parliament. He said, take a million acres of land. Guyana have timber. They have wood. And he says, not only wood, they have hardwood. They, you know. <laughs> he wanted a million acres of hardwood. The poorest country in the hemisphere. People used to cry when they hear about Guyana, how poor they were. He wanted to teach the people land. And today he posing as CARICOM big boy, unity, unity, integration. He is a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. He's driven by malice and hate. When he talk on a platform and he talk about the leader, he just come um, uh, talking about nighty and petticoat and duster and half a slip and them kind of thing. That fella has an, an, a, a paranoid obsession with the night clothes of ladies. Yes. I am not a doctor of that, but he needs some kind of help. That is not my specialty. And I have no such obsession. So brothers and sisters, I, I would invite you in closing to come out in your numbers. June 26 is our date. Come out early, mobilize in the communities. We operate with a membership system. Our organizers in every area in the country will have our list. You will know who you are, our members and so on. And you come to vote. And you come out and register. A strong vote. If the people give you ink, man, pong the ink down next to the star. Because that is what we want. A strong vote in favor of Mrs. Pasad Bisesa and her star-studded team towards the next election. So thank you for your support. We will continue to talk as we go along. Thank you all and God bless you.